What's going on YouTube? Mike here again. I'm going to show you how to build a 1,000 horsepower Honda engine. Alright guys, here I am. My highly anticipated K24 1,000 horsepower build. Throwing my parts down at the table. Months and months of saving. Months and months of accumulating all these parts researching manly rods king bearings Ferreira valve train i don't even know if that's how you say Ferreira. 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 uh i got the head from the machine shop this is a type r k20 type r head rsp head it's the highest flowing k20 k20 head uh la sleeved block fresh from the machine shop isn't that beautiful love that that deck design, all the parts in their glory. And now we're ready to begin the, you know, the ultimate K20, K24 build from scratch. Uh, start with the head. The, uh, the only thing I got done with the head, I got it cleaned and I got a competition uh, valve job along with having the head um, decked to make sure that it's flat, but each valve goes to its corresponding port. Um, they cut the valves according, uh, they cut the valve seats, I'm sorry, to the valve. So I marked each and every valve to its corresponding port so it doesn't get mixed up. So it goes to its, the port that was cut for. Right now I am in, in the process of installing the valve seats. Uh, you can never be too clean. You never know, you know, the machine shop might have missed something. So feel free to just kind of clean and blow out ports. Um, anything to make sure there's no residue or dirt. Now I'm going to install the valve seals. This is my regular speed I work, guys, if you guys are wondering. Um, I go this fast when installing valve seals. I'm using my nifty four piston tool. Now more lube. More lube. Also, if you guys are wondering, it's royal purple lube. Now, whenever there's metal to metal contact, guys, lube. More lube. Never enough lube. Lube, lube. Installing the valves back into its corresponding port. If you guys can see on the cylinder head, there are numbered just to make sure that, you know, the intake and exhaust valves go to its corresponding port. There's no mix up. The only problem is, um, especially with the Sharpies, if you spray any degreaser, it just like wipes it away. Again, installing my valve spring and retainers, uh, normal work speed. Uh, this is used by kind of a, a cheap tool. Um, you can get it online. Um, it's only used for K-series motors. It's kind of a pain to use in the beginning, but I mean, it's like equivalent to a Harbor Freight tool. Once you're done, you know, it gets the job done, but it's not something you're gonna use, you know, day in and day out. Uh, really soft aluminum, but just inspecting the head, making sure everything's tight, nothing's loose. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the engine block, but you know, that's the cylinder head assembled. Uh, the block comes with like cosmoline or some type of grease in the cylinder walls and I'm sure to prevent rust, but I go out with some ATF fluid and I wipe everything down. You don't know. Don't assume that everything is, you know, clean and tidy. Uh, even the piston rings right now, I am wiping them down. They're, you know, brand new from the package, but I wipe them down and there was dirt on even the piston rings. So uh, right now we're measuring the piston ring gap and insert it into the cylinder by hand. I have a nifty tool that squares the piston ring, make sure it's even all the way around. Take my measurement, it's too large, too big. Um, now I have to enlarge the piston ring gap. Obviously I'm gonna run on the looser end of the ring gap because I'm running boost, boost gonna, high boost especially, it's gonna create a lot of heat. I push down on the ring and you can see the, the ring gap widen. So make sure you square those piston rings. A majority of engine building is straight up measuring, uh, measuring everything and anything. 
uh, make sure this crank is, you know, everything is good. Uh, this is the rod bolt stretch gauge. I have a little kind of worksheet that I mark and write down all the measurements uh, beforehand before I get to assembling the bottom end. Keep everything clean and tidy. Now it's time to install the crank and pistons. Removing this little girdle. Clean, clean, clean. I use a uh, king bearing, guys. I, I think they're the best. Uh, just how everything is set up. Uh, king bearing. This is comes with a special coating as well. I, I opted to get the bearings coated as well. That helps with initial startup. Um, I wanted to, you know, like I said, more insurance to be safe. I'm gonna go ahead and measure, um, measure the clearances of the, the bearings with the good old faithful plasti gauge. Uh, I, I did the measurements, everything checked out, but you know, I wanted to be a little, a little more, a little more anal. This is a lot of money for this motor. This is not the Pink Widow's motor, so I'm putting, you know, getting the top line stuff. And I, and I am not uh, torquing these down with the gun, if you guys are wondering. Just kind of taking off the slack and I'll finish it off with a torque wrench to make sure everything is uh, nice and torqued to its specifications. I'm gonna break the torque and see how I did. There we go. There we go. This is always good to kind of double check the measurements, make sure that you didn't, you know, you didn't carry the decimal or, you know, messed up on your measurements. Thrust bearings and more lube. Can't have enough lube. Lining everything up. Now it's time to final assembly. More lube, more lube, more lube. I'm going ahead and place this main girdle onto the short block. So a little whack-a-mole never, never hurt and nothing. Uh, also, if you guys are wondering, it is uh, silicone sealed together. So I didn't show that part, but there was Honda bomb that was placed and sealed around the girdle. So uh, here's a little nifty final assembly. I need to turn the bolts another 56 degrees after its final torque value. Uh, I don't have that little angle gauge. So I decided to mark the uh, each bolt so that I have some type of point of reference and uh, if you guys don't tell there's a little dash on the socket and I made sure that everything lined up so this is it, the crank after uh, it being torqued to its final 56 degrees now it's uh, rod and piston time rod and piston time uh, using CP pistons and manly rods, um, only heard great things about these two companies. Yes, I did get the pistons uh, friction coated as well. You know, the advertising sold me. I, I don't know if they help per se, but you know, why not, right? Why not? Extra insurance with all the money I spent on this motor. I just gotta make sure that the piston rings are installed correctly. But the piston rings, guys, I went with OEM. Um, I went with OEM uh, when you uh, orientation of the piston rings. Man, uh, CP piston had a you know like a little picture of how they set it up, but I went with the OEM um, recommendation. It's kind of like a like an X pattern with the rings of how you orientate them. Now it's time to finalize the bottom end, rod bearings in. Nice and tidy. More lube. Lube, 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 lube. Oil all over. This is the uh, ring uh, compressor. I use a little sleeve sleeve style from Wiseco. It is the easiest ring compressor you've ever, will ever use in your life. But unfortunately, it's only for one size bore. So it would only work for, you know, a K24. I can't use it on anything else unless it's like 70, 70, 87 millimeters, I mean. So, rod, rod cap, wiping off excess Molly Lube. I'm running the 625 um, upgraded rod 
bolts with the all the power you want a little so I'm a little stronger now I'm checking all the stretch on the bolts make sure everything's good this is a piston to deck height another little nifty tool for a piston double checking like I said every building motors is all measurement you guys now it's time for the head studs these are the beautiful L19s from Speed Factory uh, ARP uh, makes them and ready to go cylinder heads ready to go do some final cleaning and inspection it's time to slap on the head using an OEM head gasket guys OEM head gasket I can't stress how <laughs> good OEM is all right I'm, like I said I'm not torquing those down I'm using the torque wrench so uh, three steps to the head studs uh, 30 30 60 90 foot pounds do that and in its pattern you're good to go I install the spark plugs I don't like to have you know why risk having something drop into your cylinder I just automatically put um, spark plugs in running these skunk to ultra cams I, I'm, I'm pretty uh, a majority of the parts on my car are skunk too love the cams uh, sh you know should I have probably cleaned the cam towers maybe maybe it would have made a little but now you have like a little contrast to you know the brand new cams versus your own cam caps and setting it down right there we're good so again normal work speed okay if you guys didn't pay attention there is actually a 10 millimeter bolt that's missing in the center cam cap i totally forgot but i got it later but I didn't want to refill. So K20 oil pump. Uh, I didn't splurge on the four piston one. I ported it myself. I'll have a video out of that. Save you guys some money. The ported ones cost twice as much, but it's, it's not really worth it. Right now I'm running a electric water pump. So this is a tough track uh, plate, water plate. And the mes mesers, mes I don't even know how to pronounce that. I'm, I apologize guys. Now I'm using an OEM tool to lock the cams into top dead center. It's a pin that goes on each side so I can time the motor. Set up the timing chains. Running a Skunk 2 cover. Um, it's a nice two-piece design so you don't have to you don't have to take off the whole motor in order to take off the head. Skunk 2 Ultra Race Manifold. Skunk 2 90 millimeter throttle body. I am Skunk 2 fanboying it right now, but um, they're super known in the industry. You can't hate people. Fast people run their products, but uh, Moroso oil pan with baffling uh, and a, like a two extra liters of capacity, two extra quarts, I think. Now installing the valve cover. And it's my favorite piece of all an RMS turbo manifold with a Borg Warner EFR 9280. This is a new turbo that just came out. It's the largest in its frame. Twin scroll. Looks beautiful with uh, RMS turbo manifold along with this billet collector favorite piece. Um, and this is the final assembly guys of the K24 K20 build. 1000 horsepower. I love it. I will be tuning this uh, setup as well. So if you're interested in keeping up at tabs, please like and please subscribe. Uh, if you enjoy this, thank you. Until next time, guys, take care. Peace.